Kinnick Jainab Packle I was known by many names. Packle, Packle the Great, Eight Ahu, Sunshield, the list goes on. He was the leader of the Maya city-state of Palanik, and according to academia, this rule and the subsequent exquisite ruins left by his reign occurred within the late classic period of Mesoamerican chronology. Undoubtedly, the most astonishing relic left by this past king, and the artifact which has fueled countless ancient astronaut theories, is the casing stone found atop his tomb. Clearly depicting some form of advanced machine, yet the question has persisted. What was the type of machine? Or indeed, what was its past function? Are we peering upon a schematic for an ancient spacecraft? Why would a king that we feel is clearly from a lost civilization go to such considerable effort having this contraption depicted upon his burial chamber? Before his name was securely deciphered from extant Maya inscriptions, only within the last few decades, may I add, little was known of this intriguing ruler. He had been known by an assortment of nicknames, and we find it interesting that, regardless of the clearly advanced knowledge bestowed within the ancient constructions of such sites, academics continue to create suspiciously complete timelines surrounding these structures, their rulers, and even dating the builds. Yet their explanations as to how these tasks were completed are utterly absent from the thousands of books written funded, supported, and published by this select group of influential individuals. However, during our own research, we have found a compelling lead regarding this ancient site. A set of images, purportedly showing an artifact once found beneath Pockle's tomb. And although we have been unsuccessful in finding any more photography of the artifact, we have found out where it is currently being held. The Mexican National Museum What makes this particular artifact so compelling to us is its resemblance to rocket thrusters. Its deliberately sculpted shape is uncanny of a three-cone rocket and was clearly not intended to be an ornament with such an awkward form. This artifact, if indeed depicting some form of ancient thruster, throws up some rather controversial yet astonishing questions. Is it a mere basalt sculpture? Or is it actually made from some sort of metal? Was this artifact created by Pockel? Was it his idea? Or was it a craft that his people found and subsequently brought to him? A vessel Pockel attempts to depict on the case of his tomb. According to the very limited information we were able to extrapolate from the web, it is being housed within the bowels of the Mexican National Museum. We are unfortunately yet to find any more pictures of this clearly compellingly shaped artifact that was once found beneath a tomb many feel actually depicts a space-going craft. Why has there not been more heard of this intriguing artifact? Is it being hidden by the Mexican government? We find the shape of this artifact, its found location, and its clear academic elusiveness as highly compelling. Often within adventure movies, the household hero will be traversing some deep, dark, ancient corner of our world. Accompanied by a trusty flaming lantern, a light source which will often seemingly have an endless fuel supply. Additionally, the lamps which litter the walls of these elaborate film sets were presumably lit many hundreds, even thousands of years prior to our intrepid explorer's entry into the ancient booby-trap-laden lair. Many perceive these flaming props as mere stage trickery, a subtle showbiz deception, helping with the lighting of often dungeon-esque locations. Amazingly, however, it seems that these apparent ever-burning cave lanterns may have been included, by an astute understanding of as yet, unexplained historical realities. One Egyptian death tradition, a custom rarely shared academically, was the frequent placement of an eternal burning lamp somewhere inside the sealed chamber. How were ancients able to produce seemingly ever-burning lamps? Lamps which could burn apparently without fuel. Based on overwhelmingly large volumes of reports of their existence, discoveries in tombs, 
underground chambers, temples, and many other places dotting the entire Earth, it's hard to see how these amazing light sources could have just been a mere rumor. Yet, unfortunately, or rather conveniently, not a single lantern is known to exist today for study. At times in human history, before the birth of particular global commercial agendas, inventors and pioneers of many scientific fields were encouraged, rather than stifled, into the investigation into the functioning of such ancient high technologies. During the Middle Ages, for example, 170 exploratory, in-depth reports surrounding these astonishing finds were published, most stating that they clearly demonstrated a valuable phenomenon. In the year 140, a lamp was discovered in the tomb of Pallas, son of King Evander. This light source had apparently been burning bright for over 2,000 years. Upon an in-depth examination involving a testing of the flame's robustness, it could apparently resist all ordinary methods of extinguishment. In about 1540, during the papacy of Paul III, a burning lamp was found in a tomb in Rome. The tomb belonged to the daughter of Cicero. She died in 44 BC, meaning this lamp had been burning in the sealed vault for 1,550 years, yet it strangely extinguished the moment it left the room. When King Henry VIII broke away from the Catholic Church in 1534, he ordered dissolution of monasteries in Britain. Many tombs were opened. In Yorkshire, a burning lamp was discovered in a tomb of Constantius Chlorus, father of the great Constantine. He died in 300 AD, which means that this lamp had been happily burning for more than 1,200 years. With such overwhelming numbers of reports, reliable testimonies attesting to the existence of these lamps, it's hard to see how they could just be a product of Hollywood. Regardless, it seems all have successfully been erased from public view, presumably hidden within the chasms of scientific institutions whose financial insurance policy is, unfortunately, often implicated in the concealment of historical artifactual evidence, physical objects in direct disagreement with their highly profitable yet shoddy foundation for scientific direction. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The archaeological site of Assos, located in the southwestern part of the Biga Peninsula. The location of the Assos settlement is unique in its exquisite and once highly complex design. An effortless mingling with that of the natural environment combined with the foundation of the architecture. It is also home of the world's most peculiar burial tombs now known commonly as the Meat Eaters. They are notoriously known throughout the region for their unique ability of being able to dissolve the remains of the locals in surprisingly short periods of time. The Meat Eater tombs are clearly ancient, yet their true antiquity is still unknown. They were originally cut to rough designs, with their interior and detailed decorations completed in the graveyard. Some long-term investigative researchers at the site are fascinated with this phenomenon and have been eagerly trying to figure out just what's causing the bodies to decompose so quickly in these particular tombs. The current favorite theory is that of a high content of aluminum within the stone used, some claiming that the aluminum material is what's causing the fast decomposition. Maybe the locals of Assos somehow figured out that aluminum could corrode flesh if added in specific quantities to the stone subsequently putting this material inside the tombs to decompose the bodies within a short period of time. The meat-eater tombs of Assos become more famous every day, as more and more specialists become aware of their fascinating and unique characteristics. Professor Naritan Aslan, head of the archaeology department, thus head of the excavations in the ancient city, told us, quote, The fact that these tombs were exported to different countries shows that they were very expensive and highly sought-after tombs. Just how do the meat-eater tombs work? Regardless of the currently peddled theories, we still do not know. They remain an enigma to science and a mystery to history. Arce, the American Research Center in Egypt. Arce's website states as follows. Among Arce's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. 
Arsi is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's chamber at the Great Pyramid, using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors placed close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by Arce, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries, published within the Due Service Day Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton, The Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balville have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the Secret Chamber's existence. The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and sphinx existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arsi. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. Kent Weeks is an Egyptologist, a Connecticut-based archaeologist who studies the culture and artifacts of ancient Egyptian civilization. He's a man who owns a comfortable home in a wooded part of Old Lyme, yet one senses this is but a stopping place to hang his hat. Since long ago, Kent Weeks hung his heart in Egypt. Originally from Seattle, a lifelong love affair with the mysteries of Egypt was ignited within weeks from an early age. He recalls that he never cared about anything else. Reading about Egypt and archaeology was all Weeks was interested in doing from the age of seven. My parents didn't think it was dumb and my teachers encouraged it. I never outgrew it, says Weeks in one of his books regarding his incredible discovery within the Valley of Kings. After pursuing qualifications in the field, Dr. Weeks became aware of the need for a dependable and comprehensive mapping of the tombs and other numerous monuments in the Theban region. Weeks decided to create a project to survey and map the Theban West Bank and thus the Theban Mapping Project was created. In 1987, while following up clues from ancient texts, the reports of earlier explorers and the results of remote sensing surveys, the project examined an area to the northeast of the entrance to the tomb of Ramses IX, where he felt a long-neglected tomb might be located. 
located a mere 70 meters from King Tut's initial resting place and totaling an incredible 121 chambers with connecting passageways, it is the largest and quite possibly oldest tomb ever discovered in Egypt. An immense underground system which lay forgotten for thousands of years. It has also been an incredibly expensive tomb to excavate. Considerable architectural supports have been required because of damage to the tombs although we suspect this is due to the tunnel's immense age, maybe far older than we are led to believe. Additionally, several tons of very ancient flood debris from past flash flood events from Earth's very distant history has also required removal. Just how old are the tunnels Kent Weeks found in the Valley of Kings? The Great Sphinx displays similar scars from past submersion from seawater. Some conclude these ancient monuments may even predate the last ice age. Unfortunately, it had been looted on several occasions, leaving little in the way of precious artifacts strewn amongst the debris from the past deluge. The remains of numerous mummies, which have been discovered during archaeological works, are just a drop in the ocean regarding the treasures once buried in the chambers thousands of years ago. Finding such items within millennia of junk can be a painstaking and time-consuming task, something which continues to this day. In the spring of 1995, a team of Egyptologists entered a T-shaped extension of the tomb which goes to the east. The researchers were overwhelmed with the magnificence of the tomb. Although it was badly damaged, it remains a beautiful example of what we believe is original Egyptian art, the true constructors of the pyramid. The rock-cut image of the god Osiris still located in the tomb, protecting the burial chamber's occupants. Although mainstream archaeology, including Weeks, states the preservation of the human remains was very poor. We propose these mummies to be several thousands of years older than claimed. We believe this discovery to be an incredibly important and incredibly ancient one, proving that there was once indeed a great flood, a premise now held by countless individuals who have studied the facts of our history. As always, thanks for watching guys, take care.